British Columbia has a serious fentanyl crisis that is killing hundreds and hundreds of people. In November, we saw a record 128 overdose deaths from fentanyl in the province. And on December 15th alone, 11 people died on the downtown east side here in Vancouver in just one night. The coroner called it a public health emergency months ago, and now the police have indicated they are trying to do everything they can to stop pill presses and shipments of fentanyl from entering the country from China. The challenge? Well, as little as 20 to 30 grams of fentanyl is often sent in small mail packages, some no bigger than a standard letter. And that 20 to 30 grams can be cut up into such small amounts and do incredible damage, as I've just outlined. So the question is, what do we do about this problem? Well, for many on the left and in academia or in healthcare, they are all about harm reduction. And when it comes to intravenous drug use, that mainly comes in the form of needle exchanges and safe injection sites. And recently, the federal liberals loosened the laws surrounding the rules for putting a safe injection site into a community. Vancouver is home to the country's first safe injection site known as Insight, which opened in 2000 in the downtown east side. Now, many of you will know this part of town has always been Vancouver's skid row. And according to the very reputable Lancet Medical Journal, Insight has helped reduce overdose deaths significantly on the downtown east side. However, safe injection sites are an anchor to a neighborhood and prevent gentrification of any kind from going forward. You know, I can get on board with trying to save people's lives, especially in this current crisis of overdosing. But I have an egregious example of politicians trying to do too much and actually endangering and jeopardizing public safety in the name of safe injection sites. On Boxing Day, Nanaimo City Councilors Gord Fuller and Jim Kipp set up an, and organized a pop-up safe injection site right in Nanaimo City Hall's parking lot. Not surprisingly, the pop-up injection site resulted in a closure of City Hall a couple days later due to health and safety concerns expressed by both the RCMP and bylaw officials but over the weekend after adding extra security, the site was reopened. It's expected to remain open this week until Vancouver Island Health Authority can decide on a permanent location for a safe injection site in Nanaimo. You know, politicians come up with bad ideas all the time, but this has got to be up there with the all time worst, don't you think? I mean, normalizing the public use of needles and drugs like fentanyl and the junkie lifestyle generally is a terrible precedent to be setting in our cities. But I also get that the deadly nature of fentanyl means something needs to be done. Because while we may look at drug users as simple addicts, to others, they are fathers, mothers, sons and daughters. And most of the time there is great pain to those who know them when they overdose. So what's the solution here? Well, I think it's time we take a serious look at the negative consequences and impacts of deinstitutionalization as a whole. Beginning in the 1960s, there was a big push to end the kind of large mental health institutions where many addicts and those with severe cases would be put. And yes, during the early part of last century, many, many abuses and wrongdoings were committed at these kind of facilities. But I think now with the awareness around mental health and addiction, we look at reopening some of these facilities rather than simply providing a dose of naloxone to someone overdosing and then leaving them to potentially do it again a few hours later. That happens a lot actually, you'd be surprised. These modern institutions could provide significant care and harm reduction and probably at a cost similar to what we are paying now for policing and health services on places like the downtown east side where we spend about a million and a quarter dollars a day. But what do you think? What do you think about my idea? Certainly pop-up injection sites are not the solution. But I also want to be compassionate as I know that just about every single one of you watching knows someone suffering from addiction or have a friend or family member who are affected by it in some way. And as taxpayers, well, we all pay for the added services needed to deal with this crisis. So tell me what you think of my idea of compassionate reinstitutionalization as a legitimate idea going forward, you can contact me at Christopher at the Rebel.media. And for the Rebel.media, I am Christopher Wilson.
Thanks so much for watching. You know it's a new year, but if you haven't signed up for premium content yet on the rebel.media, well, click up here and for just $8 a month, you can get full-length shows that are not available on our YouTube channel.